Welcome everybody. Um, this is the teaching and learning call for uh, May 19th and um, I'm Wilma Hodges. I'll be facilitating today. Um, today we're going to be doing a Jira Palooza on rubrics Jiras. So um, Laura Sierra was good enough to collect a list of hot topics in the I think we lost your audio, Wilma. I think we lost her completely. Okay, could you guys still hear me? Big yeah, you, can hear you now. Yeah, you disappeared for a moment, but you're back. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so, uh we're going to be doing Jirapalooza on Rubrics Jiras today. Um, but before we start, if you haven't already signed in, um, please do on the Etherpad link there. It should be in the, the chat. It's up near the top. You might have to scroll up a little bit to find it. And um, we'll start off with just a couple of announcements. Um, we do have our Sakai Online Faculty Showcase coming up next week. That's um, a week from today. It's on Wednesday of next week at 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so we invite you to register. Registration is free. We just want people to sign up so we know how many people will be attending. Um, and encourage folks at your institutions to register. We've got a great uh, collection of stories from faculty at different institutions. Um, and so it should be a really uh, entertaining and, um, you know, inspiring event. So I hope, I hope that you'll attend and that you'll encourage folks at your institutions to attend. Um, we also have the Aussie Ed Awards. That's the new name for the um, Atlas Awards. So if you'll recall, um, we had talked with Ian at a previous teaching and learning call about you know, what to do, revising the process, making it a little easier to, um, to nominate folks for the teaching award. And um, we settled on Aussie Ed. I think it's open source innovation in education or something like that. I forget the acronym, but, but that's the name. <laughs> and it's not just Aperio projects, but it's also uh, all or open source um, teaching and learning related projects are are eligible to you know apply or be nominated. So we're trying to maybe get a little more participation from other open source projects in the education space. So um, the deadline for submissions is June 1st. So there's, it's a tight turnaround, but there's still a little bit of time. So we really encourage you to nominate folks um, from your institutions who are doing um, you know, really good things with Sakai or other open source products, um, whether they're Perio projects or other open source. Um, we encourage you to nominate those folks. We are also looking for people to help um, select the award winners. So if you're interested in being on the selection committee, the time commitment should be fairly low. Um, we don't anticipate that we'll have a huge number of um, nominations because the time frame is so short and the, the award is kind of new in the sense that we've um, broadened it out. So I, I doubt that we'll have a huge number of things to review. So it should be a fairly straightforward um, selection process. If you're interested, let me know, or you could also uh, email Ian Dolphin um, and let him know, and uh, I'll, I'll add his email to that announcement and, and mine as well, in case you're interested. So are there any other announcements from folks before we continue? Okie doke. So we will go ahead and um, dive into our rubrics, JIRAs. Now, um, Laura, do you want me to share a screen? Do you want to share a screen? I can give you a presenter if you'd like. Um, why don't you share a screen? I've been in meetings all day, so I should have been able to set this up, and I haven't been able to yet. It's already been a long morning. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. All I right, think so. we all do, don't we? Yeah. All right. So I'm sharing my screen. Hopefully you'll be seeing it. Yeah. All right. 
So um, I'm just going to open up the first one. It's under grading. And do you want to <clears throat> kind of talk us through it sure. a little bit? So this one I think is 44472. Yeah, weighted rubric points shows unweighted points with adjusted score, which is a hard way of saying it. But basically, if you've got some criterion set up, and you've clicked through and given the student their grade, but you're adjusting one of those to a slightly higher grade. So maybe they earned 50 points in that first criterion. They earned 50 points, now let's say they earned 20 points for like doing okay. But you're saying to the student in the uh, override, you're saying, you know what, 20 points, I'm gonna give you 25 points. You know, you're somewhere between these two criteria. So I'm gonna override it. Um, and you save that. When the student goes in to look at the rubric, when they see the override, it actually it actually shows the maximum amount of points that were available for that criterion, 50, crossed out with that 25 that you added in. Instead of seeing that the kid actually earned 20 and you overwrote that for a 25, they see a 50 crossed out with the 25. So it looks like you actually deducted points instead of adding it in. So it, it's a it's just a visual thing. It doesn't change their grade, their grade actually displays correctly, but the override part of it, what's crossed out, looks like they actually lost points because it's showing the maximum points being crossed out. Does that make sense? <laughs> Some of these you just kind of have to go through to see it, but basically it's a display problem for the student's view of the rubric. I think there's a screenshot in that JIRA. Uh, yes, the second screenshot in that JIRA shows now that's the, yeah, the first, there it is. Um, so it shows the maximum, that very first criterion, it shows the maximum points that the student could have earned crossed out with the 30 that, that the instructor overrode. The first screenshot is what the instructor actually did was gave the student 25 points and then overrode it with a 30, which is what the student should see. So that's problematic for kids because they're going to look at it and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, what? You gave me a 50, but, you know, instead took me down to a 30? I don't get it. So I don't know why it's different for the student than for the instructor in this case. Okay, so are these screenshots, the ones of the instructor and ones of the student? Yes, you so the first one is the instructor having over written the 25 to give the student a 30. And then mm -hmm. the next one, however, is the student's view of that same rubric where it looks like they earned a 50, but the instructor gave them a 30. Oh, I see. I, yeah. I think it's yeah, showing yeah. where that 50 came from isn't the maximum possible. I think it's, it's the, the maximum. Unweighted. It's the unweighted for that rating. Because you see, if you look under meets expectations for criterion one, 25 points is the weighted one, 50 mm. is what the unweighted one was. So I think it's actually putting it on, I think it's select showing the unrated, unweighted points for that rating. Well, the, the second criterion though, it's 12.5 um, is what's shown over here. But I didn't do a adjustment on that cup, that one. Oh, okay. So that one was only twenty five percent. It is confusing now. It is. Now there's going to be a lot of calls to or emails to. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it should show anything except for the point value you've assigned. It should just say 30. I'd be good with that too, yeah. Could be an easier solution too. Adrian, what do you think? Just hide that original number entirely for the student. That's, that's, that's not a bad idea. I mean, what I, what I would do with this definitely is I'd, I'd, I'd probably assign it to um, to the guy who did the work in the first place. It was uh, Brian de Oliveira Bretas. I don't, I don't know what I don't know which institution he's from, but he did the original work with the weighting. So 
what I'd do is I'd assuming assuming that you know we agree on the way forward for it is that I sign it to him definitely. But yeah, I think let's hide it. It's a confusing thing. It's not like a massive thing. Well, yeah, and it doesn't change the student's grade, which is fortunate. But it is going to confuse them about what exactly happened with their grade. So maybe we can just suppress that first number entirely. We're good to go. Yeah, yeah, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense. It, it would eliminate the source of the confusion. Um, yeah, for the instructor view, then, would you leave that one still the way it, it appears now? Yeah, I think it's important to do that so that you remember that you actually made this change, what you had chosen. I mean, you see what you've chosen, I guess. Um, but it's consistent with the way it displays for the other criterion. Does everyone agree with that one? Yep. Cool. So I think we have a consensus on that one to just don't show the strike through, just show the amount awarded. And um, that should be good. I will make a note to that effect. Great. On uh, JIRA afterward. But for now, I'll just jot it down in the ad. While we take a look at the next one, let me open this up. In a new tab. Okay, so here's the next um, Jira to look at. Christina, why don't you explain this one, if you would? Um, if you create a rubric and you set it to be a weighted rubric, so you hit the little toggle and you enter in percentages. If you click that toggle again to switch back to, I'm going to say unweighted rubric, and then you go back in. So let's say you clicked it by accident or you're indecisive, it resets it back to the first criterion being 100% and any others being 0%. Um, this so it just, doesn't retain those. Yes. Yeah. It's those this is just assigned. requesting that it restart to it retain those weights. Um, like how Gradebook does for the weighted categories if you switch between those. This can be especially important. We have some instructors who have pretty, pretty specific and elegant, shall we say, um, rubrics that they put together with many, many criteria. Uh, if they were accidentally to toggle that thing off, they just lost probably a good 20 minutes of work. Yeah, it's not a big deal when there's two or three criterion, but if they've got, I've seen some rubrics my instructors have created with 10 or more criterion, that would get frustrating to have to redo. Yeah. Because they accidentally clicked that button. It's just a single click to, to yep. toggle it. Yeah. So if you just are, are scrolling around and you accidentally hit it. It's gone. All right, so I think there's general agreement on that one, right? No one has a problem with restoring the previously entered weight. As long as we can do it technically. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one, which is draft rubrics need to be modified. So Let's see. All right, this is really weird. Yeah. 
I don't know what that attachment was, but browser didn't like it. <laughs> so does anyone want to explain this one or? Oh, there's a video. Okay, that's what folks are watching. I, for some reason, that crashed when I tried to click on it. If you guys watch the video and then somebody can explain uh, the rest of us <laughs> what what's actually going on here. From the chat, um, looks like maybe a bug. Yeah, it's basically a process of the grade that is that is um, created from the rubric doesn't get populated into the grade box in the grading screen. So if you've accidentally clicked, think. What did she say? You didn't click save. Clicking done in the rubric without making changes does not send the score to. Okay, are you modifying the grade? I think. Anyway, the grade for some reason is being prevented from going into the actual grade field within the grading screen. It doesn't come over from the rubric at that point. Not sure what's blocking it from coming over. Yeah, so that does sound like a bug. Um, I mean, that, that's, sure. that's just the way the rubrics, um, it's the way it's designed. Um, so the only time that the um, you get events coming out of the rubric is when you click on one of the cells, right? So so when you, I mean, I, I know why, what I'm saying is I know like why. With the calendar. I understand like why. With the calendar, doing. right? Say again. Sorry. It's like with the calendar, like you actually have to click on a day in the calendar for it to save that date that you've chosen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. So I mean, so so rubrics maintains. So rubrics will maintain that that selection you've made, right? In in the kind of in, in the rubrics back end, yeah. And then when you when you go back into the assignment, the rubric will come up. Well, the rubric won't go, okay, this is what I've currently got selected and fire the event. We can make it do that, but it's kind of by design what it's done. There's no, there's no broken code in there, but I know I know why it's doing it. So you understand. Um, it's when you take an action, when, when you see you see those fields get populated in the tool that's hosting the rubric type thing, right? Because the rubric fires an event and says, oh, I've just, I've just selected this value type thing, yeah? I'm not saying it's not a bug. I'm just saying I know, I know why it does that. You know, it's, and I know why it works like that. Got it. Yeah. So I guess the 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 issue is either we communicate that to the user, which they'll never read, or we just kind of figure out a way for it. I mean, I love having an explanatory text everywhere, but you know what they're doing? They're clicking and they're doing a the thing and they're clicking out. So they're going to be surprised when it doesn't populate and they're not really sure how to make it populate without actively re-clicking in some of these cells. Yeah, I suppose I suppose one issue, one issue that might that might come out of that fix is that like if there's other methods, if there's other like ways of actually setting that grade, right? Other than clicking a rubric, um, you know, rating, then you're going to get like a war between someone who's setting the grade through another mechanism, another doorway, right? And then you launch the rubric and the rubric then sets the grade itself. It goes, actually, the grade's this, right? So then you're going to, so 
yeah, it just needs a bit of thinking about because uh, you, you could definitely get some side effects coming out of um, you know changing the way that works now, unless we make sure that an assignment that's graded with a rubric, you can't modify the grade through any other mechanism other than the rubric. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, I do. So yeah, just because, you know, if I was working on it, I'd be cautious about that. You know, of uh, you know, causing some, some of the side effects. I mean, there's, there's so many ways we can modify these grades in Sakai. You know, like oh yeah, and what if this is associated with a gradebook item, and you change the item's score in the gradebook, and then it has to propagate back into the assignment tool, and then maybe into the rubric as well, right? You have to think it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's com it is complex, yeah, and like, um, I mean, if, if you launch the rubric, right, and, and the rubric updated the grade box, you'd still have to save, right? You'd have to explicitly save in the hosting tool, right? Because the hosting tool doesn't automatically push things back from the client side like rubrics does that. Rubrics does that, but the hosting tool doesn't. You have to explicitly take an action and hit save. So as long as somebody saw that that grade was, had got updated by the rubric and they went, hang on a minute, you know, this isn't right. They could cancel, right? But it's, it's not ideal, but they, they could do, you know? <laughs> hmm. Well, should we, can we force a save by adding a, well, I guess done is the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, well, then, then, you, then you're basically letting, you're letting the rubric start up, set a grade, and then save it back automatically, which could cause chaos as well. Yeah. <laughs> no easy, no easy solutions in the rubric world. No, there isn't, no. It's true. Well, this may <laughs> require a little more discussion than I guess. Well, I mean, as, as long as we as long as long we declare the intent in the ticket, right? Do, do you know what I mean? I mean, as long as, you know, the intent is to uh, prevent confusion, uh, whatever, right? And then sure. somebody sure. who knows rubrics can, can navigate that, can navigate the issues around. I mean, I've just, I've just vocalized a few of them that I know of, right? And sure. there's, other, there's plenty of other people who've done work on rubrics who will, probably say similar stuff so there are people around who can navigate that bit as long as we catch the intention in the, in the jira that's that's cool i don't think we need to have a lot of discussion about i think it's pretty clear how we want it to work we don't want it to confuse people mm -hmm. you know we're only going oh this this, this doesn't match these, these these selected uh ratings don't match that great what was that about you know mm -hmm. exactly Rubrics equals chaos. <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got to rein it in. We've just got to rein it in. It's power. There's power there. Yeah, so I'm not sure what we add to the rubric or to the uh, Jira to express what we just done yeah i don't know adrian maybe you can just add a couple of sentences there about you know this is how it works on the back end and you know i, I don't know that might yeah. help enlighten people to it's just it, it's a sign to me anyway it seems to be magically so lucky you <laughs> <laughs> yeah looks like it, it let's give us a populated okay. your name in there <laughs> nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you could add a comment about the way that it works on the yeah, technical okay. side, then maybe um, we could just ask folks to comment on this JIRA with yeah. the way that they would expect it to behave as a user, like, you know, preferred okay. handling of this. Okay, so any additional thoughts on this one? Right, I think that's on. good. I think that's good. Um, so that was, let's see, four, five, two, three. So now we're going to look at allow negative penalty points for criteria. And this was the one that uh, we just added today. 
So this is a feature request. And Christina, would you like to Certainly. explain it to us? Um, right now, it looks like it, rubrics are not intended to allow um, negative points if you're doing an adjust uh, criterion, if you're doing the adjust a score. But you actually can if you type the number, then the, add the negative in front of it. So I was doing that in all the testing, and I found inconsistency in which tools will allow a negative and which ones will not. And I'm thinking we should be consistent, and we should certainly allow a negative number of points for a criterion as long as the overall score going into the grade book is zero or higher. Um, so like tests and quizzes, grading, if you're grading by student, it will not let you enter a negative number. It gives you a warning it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, tests and quizzes, if you're grading by question, um, it was broken and I think now it is fixed that it will save a negative criterion but I don't know if it will allow a negative points for a question. Assignments, um, classic grader, you can enter a negative um, points for a criterion. New grader um, had problems at the time. I think that might be fixed, so it should allow negative points. Um, Gradebook does, faith, um, forums does not. Yeah, so definitely we should be consistent across tools. Um, it's pretty consistent within a tool. Yeah. <laughs> yep, sounds and awesome. We the argument that for tests and quizzes, since you can give a negative score if you're grading manually, not using a rubric, you should be able to give a negative score for a question using a rubric as long as the overall test score is zero or higher. Man, that's got to be a bad answer from a student for me to give them a negative something. Wow. <laughs> I mean, zero. Z okay, zero. Just let's move on. Nope, negative 10. That sucked. You, you can set uh, negative points for guessing for like the multiple choice questions. So, sure. Yeah. And sometimes people want to take off points for being late or something like that as well so or completely you know. going against what that you know criterion was looking for yeah i'm not sure how many people use negative rubrics either but um Somebody's gonna try it. <laughs> uh -huh. It's 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 gonna happen. Somebody's gonna want to do it for some reason. Especially if it's participation. Yeah. You know, if you're using yeah. it for participation grade. I yeah. could also see it for let's say a rubric for a research paper. If you've got a criterion for you know everything is properly cited, uh, yada, oh, yeah, yada, and you've got some blatant plagiarism. E -e 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 -e. Sure. Yeah. Penalize that one a little bit. Well, this feels like it might be a little bigger fish to fry, though, right? Because we're yeah, because you're talking about multiple tools here, so it's not just the rubrics; it's the way the different tools handle scoring. Dave is asking, do the different tools need addressing first? That's a good question. Um, Adrian, do you have an opinion on that? I'm still typing my comment to the last year, I'm afraid. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, it sounds like um, it's, it does sound like a pretty big job because like all the tools are different. I mean, this is this is going back to the old centralized grading service stuff that, that yeah. we were talking yeah. about, and we're just not finding the cycles just to. Just to just to finish, right? I mean, we started doing all that stuff, got about fifty odd percent into it, and then just got pulled onto other things. Me and Earl, do you know what I mean? And uh, just the grading, the grading across the tools is so so inconsistent. And do you know? Do you know what I mean? It's 
and we've got all these things like scaling factors to throw into things and all that stuff and it's just mind bending and uh yeah this will probably be a big a, a decent chunk of work because you're gonna have to go through each tool uh discuss it you know um discuss the approach that people want to take and just standardize that approach across all the tools and then just make rubrics work in the same way so it's it's, it's a worthy it's a worthy piece of work individual sure. tickets for each tool and then link them to this one uh yes yes we can do that and um make them bugs make them bugs as well don't don't make them tasks uh like a subtask okay. and all that we're, we're better off just working with bugs uh, okay. it's easier yeah But they are bugs. I don't, I don't think it's a feature request. I think, I think you know, inconsistent behavior is bugginess, so. Okay, I can create bug report, bugs for uh, each of the individual tools and then just link them to this one. I might yep. request them while I'm at it just to make sure th um, between 21 when I created this and 22, you guys didn't go changing how things are working for me. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that'd be great, thanks. Great. Thanks, Christina. Um, okay, so let's see. Now we're on to group awareness. So that'll be pretty easy to walk through because I think everyone kind of understands that um, instructors will frequently want to use a, a rubric for a group assignment or group anything. But unfortunately, the rubric doesn't know to show that, to show itself to all the members of a group. I think what I've seen is um, it may show itself to one member of the group, and I don't know that we can predict which member it will be, who the lucky winner is. It isn't necessarily the student, say, who uh, turned in the, the work, the paper, for the other three. Um, we just don't know who it'll be. So it just, it just needs a little work to be group aware. Um, yeah, right. I, I agree. And um, we, well, okay, don't, don't get overexcited about this, right? Because there's bad news coming after this. But we, we have got a fix for this, right? That I did, right? To make um, to make it make it group aware, right? But the fix I did isn't. It's not the ideal solution, right? So, um, so we kind of we kind of discuss this. Um, you know, among a few developers, and um, the, the kind of path I took isn't ideal, but the alternative path is a lot of work, which may involve refactoring you know, significant chunks of rubrics, like the back oh. ends, oh, wow. which does need doing at some point, right? But that that approach, that other approach, I haven't, I haven't got the um, I haven't got the space to do that at the moment, right? So um, so I may. I may get back with Earl on this and see see whether what, they can uh, get my old what, my old, my other fix in. Maybe what's your yeah? What's your less than perfect fix? It's it's less than perfect because of the way that I'm um, storing the group association in the database. Right, Rubrics is a strange is a strange tool. Right, it was written by Unicom, um, and it was written it was designed. To be able to run outside of Sakai, right? Like as a microservice somewhere. Yeah? So the architecture of Rubik is totally different to any other tool we've got. Um, and this this is this is something that often causes a lot of difficulty when developing uh, for rubrics. So the fix that we kind of would prefer to do is to actually make rubrics actual pr proper Sakai entities, right? And use Sakai's you know permission system right it doesn't, it doesn't even use sakai's normal permission system it uses a uh, thing called spring uh, spring security right? which is something that sits outside and uh, no other tool uses that in sakai um so it's, it's more uh, it, yeah it's more of that i mean i don't i don't think that solution is not too bad right but i, I can see you know I've, I've talked to a few people and i can see their point that uh, long term we're better off biting the bullet and doing work that's necessary right to, to make rubrics more like a normal sakai tool and, and fix things like groups in the process sure. but i haven't i haven't got the cycles to do that now and i probably won't until after like i'm working on forums next all that stuff and uh so i may get back i may i may get back with earl and uh try and you know see whether he's up for me putting this other fix back in as a temporary thing and then 
because you know, yeah, maybe that's that's what I'll do. I think I'm, I'm going to get back with Earl about it and see if I can get my other fix back in. I mean, I guess another perfect workaround could be to take a screenshot of the filled out rubric and paste it into the you know feedback cell for <clears throat> for the group and return it that way. But yeah, it's, no, no, it's that's. I mean, no, that's that's not good, is it? You know, I mean. Yeah. My 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 fix that I've done it's not it's not that many lines of code right but the, the worry is that when you put a fix in like that you're never going to go back and do the proper fix later right you're never going to go back and do the the work you really need to do with it so I can understand why people are reticent about letting you know kind of like you know second you know second you know second class or whatever you know slightly slightly you know, good rather than perfect fixes in because you don't go back and fix them afterwards. So I get that. I understand why that, why, uh, why it got kicked out. But but I'm not gonna have time to do it before 22, right? So I'll, I'll go. I'll I'll get with Earl. I'll get with Earl and I'll ask him. Well, I'll I'll talk over him again with my about my patch that I did and see if see if he's up for um, you know letting that in. Great. Okay. So we have a fix. It's just, it's yeah. just kind of, it's just not, do, you know, do we want the, um, you know, the perfect to the enemy, the good? Well, no, not really. No. So. And it's enough of a, it's enough of a popular use of rubric that I think we need to give them some kind of solution. Yeah, I agree. I, I yeah. totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. All right, so we're in support of the Band-Aid. Is that the, the gist? Stop the blood flow for now. Do a little triage. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll make a note to that effect later. Um, all right. Maybe reword it. Don't use the word. Yeah, word. A, little, a little more tactful, but yeah. I mean, both okay. of these JIRAs under group awareness. Yeah, these are pretty much kind of the same. Um, yeah. you know, so they're, they're now, both I, have the next section is permissions. I can't speak to the permission things because I haven't tested them. I don't know if Christina's got a fresher look at the, the permission issues or not, but I have not been able to test those yet. But I would be interested to hear. Yeah, let's see. So, if the instructor enables then disables access and tool order students retain rubrics editor permission. Now, see, that sounds like a student would be able to actually edit the rubric. Yeah. When does that ever happen? It shouldn't. I made this minor because the student at this point can no longer see rubrics in the navigation and is unable to edit rubrics. Okay. Yeah, remember maybe there was a, ser a previous issue where it did allow the students to actually see the full rubrics tool and there was no granular permissions in there. So they could see the rubrics, they could edit the rubrics. If they weren't locked, they could create new rubrics. That was a mess. But you know, that really, that doesn't give them the ability to grade anybody because they would have to have that ability within a tool. They never see a grading screen. So I guess this is really, yeah, yeah, this is a, pretty minor thing then they they would actually have to get into the rubrics tool to mess with it but they're not going to affect grades anywhere so that doesn't feel like it's a, a big big deal yeah i think what was happening was instructors were making the rubrics manager visible for students because they thought that students needed that to be able right. to see their graded rubric which is not the case yeah 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 Actually, the, the problem we were having is instructors thought the rubrics tool was visible to students, so they would hide it. Yeah. And when they did that, the students couldn't see their graded rubrics anymore. And so then when the, the instructor unhid the rubric again, the permissions were screwed up. Now, I think that bug was fixed. Yeah. But, but that was an issue that, that we had been having. Oh, that's weird. That, that instructors didn't realize that the rubrics tool was just invisible to students and they thought they had to hide it. And that just screwed up the... So like, uh, what's the other tool? That, analytics? Or I mean, sorry. Statistics? statistics? Yeah. 
it, it, I mean, it should be consistent to have that little eye on it then when it shows up so that they know it's not visible to students because that's kind of confusing. Well, there is a student view of that now. Let's okay. Turn that property on for statistics because um, there's a, a view of statistics where the student only sees their own activity. Okay. But by default, you're right, it is invisible to students unless you turn on that property and set the permissions so that they can see it. All right, so this one I don't think is as big of a deal because I think the bug that was causing people to make it enable or disable has been fixed. So moving on to the other one, which is a TA. Okay, so TA can't grade assignment even after getting instructor permission. So when was this open in February? Oh boy, okay, that's a long list. All oh, right, long one. tab key, tab key, okay. <laughs> Um, the description is really short. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fortunately. All right, well, that would be a problem, not letting TA. Yeah. I mean, is this just an automatic that permission? Looks... <laughs> That's the longest test plan I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, essentially set up a rubric and have a TA test it. Yeah, Mark has gone to town on that. <laughs> <laughs> the town and back. <laughs> yeah, that's the accessibility way to set up the rubric. At least someone's tested that they can tab through it and get it <laughs> yeah, set up. True, so that's yeah. good. I mean, is that just a permission, a default permission that needs to be attached to the rubric tool that could fix that? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to have a look. Proper look through that. I mean, uh... I haven't looked at permissions recently to see what are which ones are attached to rubric. I don't think there's a lot of them. No. Again, you've you've got this kind of like strange world that rubrics lives in, permission wise, where what you what you effectively get at the end is a set of internal roles to rubrics that people get mapped to. Do you know what I mean? Uh, oh, Dave's got a good point. Is this also related to? having to add the TA via the section tool to a section that then gives them grading permissions for assignments where they could also grade the rubric. Oof. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think it's related to that. It doesn't, doesn't feel like it, it is. Uh, I'd have to take a proper look at this. Um, I'll have to go through the test plan. <laughs> <laughs> have fun. Like a lunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't he add in the bottom well, the non accessible? Oh, no. He's just got what he put in there. Yeah. I mean, he's just tabbing you through how to set up the rubric. So skip yeah. all of that stuff in the first 20 and seconds. He's got all of the <laughs> settings for the assignment. So. Which isn't necessarily needed either. We just need to attach it to an assignment right. and try to grade it. Okay. Yeah, it, he's just going to permissions to give the TA permission to grade. So it doesn't look like he's going through the section info tool. But I'd say the priority is right anyway. So yeah, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> it's hard to right <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, um, so. If this does exist, I mean, I guess we could, uh, if, if the test plan still is valid, it hasn't been fixed since then, mm -hmm. um, then uh, I think we can all agree that TAs should be able to grade. So it's yeah. definitely a bug. Um, I'll tell you, I was really happy when I was going through a lot of the JIRAs that were out there that had been created, I think, last summer to, to test them out to see that several of them had just whether through, I don't know, I wouldn't say attrition, but at other active changes in the system that they just worked themselves out. So we were yeah. able to close quite a few of them, which was 
such a wonderful thing. <laughs> yeah, it's always it, great it, when that happens. Oh, yeah, it's like, well, look, that fixed itself. All right, next. I love that. <laughs> I love that. You know, the next thing that I've got on here isn't actually a JIRA, but I, I just wanted to put it in front of teaching and learning um, because it's a user thing. And it's maybe, I mean, it's, I think it's probably minor, which is that when you first create a rubric, you don't actually ever have to save. I mean, that's that's awesome. But we, we, we've, we're so trained in Sakai that you have to save somewhere or click finish or click update or something that when you first create a rubric, I guess, you, you know, you fill out your criteria and everything's good. And if you don't have weighted, you don't have weighted criteria, um, there's no save button. You just you create it and, and, and you're done. And it kind of feels like, wait, is it, did it save it? Can I use it now? I don't mean I don't I don't want to just put in a save button just to put in a save button, but there's like no sense that I'm done here and I can leave the screen because it just saves what you did. Yeah, I've had that yeah. same kind of unfinished feeling. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know because nothing tells or you know, if you click out of it, maybe the screen, you know, there could be a little thing at the top that says your rubrics changes have been saved or, or something, you know. There's just no confirmation for me that it was. Now, if you have weighted criteria, um, yes, there is a button to update or save. I forget what it what its word is, but um, that you do have to actively save. But just creating one from scratch, there's nothing there to tell me it's saved. How do others feel about that? Would you prefer to have some sort of confirmation or save button. Mm. Dave says that is similar to adding grade, but well, at least when you add a, a point in a cell in grade book, it like gives you a check mark, doesn't it? It gives you some kind yeah, of- Yeah, you get like a little flash yeah. of a green yeah. check mark. Yeah. That might be something that we should use or test. But I agree, it, it would be nice to get a confirmation of some sort. Yeah. I don't want to make the process more clicks. You yeah. Know, but at yeah, the same I mean, time, actually, it's wonderful that it just saves what you've done and moves on. It's like, wow, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. But I don't think any user of Sakai will expect that it saved what they did, and they might be a little leery about clicking out because. There's no confirmation. So not to belabor it, but I just wondered what people thought about that. It might be, might be worth asking, uh, you know, kind of Derek or Kenny about that, Wilma, do you know what I mean? Because I've never heard any, yeah. but I mean, of, of all the rubrics issues I've heard from, from our clients, and there are many, right? I've never, I've never heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> I need yeah. another step. I need to do another thing before I'm done. <laughs> Said nobody ever. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never heard that mentioned once. Which is interesting, you know. Yeah, I've thought it, but I, I didn't. It wasn't enough of a feeling that I felt like <laughs> I had to say anything about it. But now that you mention it, <laughs> so, uncanny, I mean, it would be <laughs> it would be interesting to know if other people. Well, for right now, we can just say it's a it's an education thing. Let's it saved it yeah. for you. You can move on, and you'll be able to easily see that it saved it because you just click out and come back, and there it is, exactly mm -hmm. as you left it. So it, I think it's very minor. But uh, it'll it'll stop people and make them wonder if it even saved at all. So, With, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I'll, I'll definitely I'll often ask uh, I'll ask Derek and Kenny about that and see and see if we've had anything back from our clients about that stuff. Because I mean, they might well have dealt with it and gone, "Oh, it's all right, it's saved, it's fine," and then they've gone away happy about mm -hmm. it, right? And, right. and, and then they, they never float it to me. They never they never surface that with me. You know what I mean? So I'll ask. I'll, I'll definitely ask the question. Should I open a Jira and just pose the question? didn't hurt. I mean, right. that way we have it. We don't lose track of it because if we yeah. just talk about it today and then, you know, two months from now, nobody's going to remember it. Yeah. Okay. So it's a feature request and it's minor. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and UX would be a good group to yeah. um, take a look at it too. You might want to sure. give it the UX label. I mean, I prefer the idea of, of a visual cue that is saved and mm -hmm. having save buttons and things just for the technical work that is going to go into 
having save buttons and changing the way rubrics yeah. pushes yeah. its stuff back. You know what I mean? But yeah. Well, you know, if that's what people really want, then fine. We just we just grasp that nettle. But um, but yeah, you know, like uh, like the great, the you know, the new grader does the same thing as what Greybug does. When you when you save now, I've put you know I've got visual cues in there now in the new right. grader. Because people said we don't know whether it's saved. You know, so now there's a there's a little uh, acknowledgement comes up. So yeah, that's great. And the other two things are also just kind of display, like if you have a, a grade item in the grade book that was manually created and you've associated an assignment um, and add a rubric to it, um, the the item in the grade book doesn't show the rubric icon there. Now, did we decide at some point we wanted to disable that association process? I think we talked about it a little bit. Yeah. Assignment, of course, is the only one. That, well, I guess. I would I would definitely be in favor of disabling the association option because I think it, it causes a lot of confusion mm -hmm. that you can have two different ways to, mm -hmm. to grade two different places you go to grade mm -hmm. one of them shows the icon one of them doesn't I just I think it, it just creates a lot of confusion yeah and ideally you know with the centralized grade book which, which comes up again um, if everything was going to one central gradebook, we wouldn't have this issue. Um, but we do because it hasn't all, you know, happened yet. So um, ideally, there should only be one way to, to grade an item. Well, can we just suppress that option in the assignments tool when you're setting it up to, that your only option is to add the grade to the gradebook, just like tests and quizzes does? Um, I mean, we, yeah. I suppose we yeah. could, what I worry is that, you know, people who are copying courses over from previous terms that had it set up the other way. I mean, what do we do with those? There would have to be some sort of conversion that would yeah. happen. To um, can I also echo in here? I also have some faculty that actually create assignments and then link them manually so that they can just enter the grades over in the grade book rather than having to click through the assignment. Like they'll get them yeah. turned by hand and they're like, okay, that's great. And the, but they want to be able to do that really cool interface of the grade book and just be able to like, you know, put in the scores and be done. Yeah. Yeah. So they're kind of exploiting that that little loophole. <laughs> yes. Yes, <laughs> actually they are. And, yeah. and for face-to-face -face classes where people yeah. are actually turning physical things in and that have yeah. TAs that grade them and enter the stuff. Yeah. As opposed sure. to you know lethargically yeah. methodically going through assignments yeah. and being points points that's points. fair yeah that's fair yeah yeah i mean in my, my dream world you'd be able to do that regardless like you'd be able to grade it in the grade book or in assignments and it would still go to the same place but um, my little fantasy world right now <laughs> <laughs> it's a happy place <laughs> it's a rainbow world yeah <laughs> All right. Well, that's a fair point then. We don't want to necessarily remove that. Yeah. So I think ideally this issue will go away once the centralized grade book comes yeah. into its own. Agreed. Um, so maybe, um, you know, rather than disabling something that people are using right now, sure. um, we should just kind of, you know. Deal with it a little bit longer. And I was saying, Wilma, that might be good. part of a larger strategic unfolding of how the grading service works, so that people have time to go that direction. But until we have something that we're, you know, headed towards, there's no right. sense. Yeah. So now this is a shown as a critical bug. So is is know. this one the 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 pain point about this, the fact that the icon doesn't show. That appears to be. I mean, the inconsistency we know happens underneath, but but the issue here is more about the icon than the. Honestly, yeah, which doesn't feel critical to me. It's just kind of a bit, a little bit of an inconvenience. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're displaying the assignment tool to students, they'll be able to go there and see their grade. From the rubric yeah i mean i guess it's grade related which is maybe why she made it it's critical. grade related 
but it doesn't affect their grade. It just is affects the student, their ability. Is the student to see still able to see? Is the student still able to see like that they've been graded by a rubric when they? No, work? not unless not, they go to the, the assignment. Time. Not unless yeah. they go to the assignment. Yeah. So would would it be possible to show the icon without fixing the the way the grading is done? Um, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Okay. We'll take that. We'll take a maybe. We'll, we'll take a maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I won't press you any further because we're out of time. <laughs> so it's eleven yeah, o'clock almost. Oh, yeah. oh, did you closing thought? I have this. I have this feeling that um, that we used to have that icon there, like a couple of versions ago, right? Do you know what I mean? I don't know whether it's yeah. Like it a, says right. it's not a problem in nineteen. Right, 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 right. Yeah, okay. I can either confirm yeah. or deny that in our version. I don't know. Yeah. So it it used to work, and now it doesn't. So. Right, right. All right. Well. Okay. <laughs> Congrats. Yeah. All right. Well, we are out of time. Um, so thank you guys for participating in our Jiraplooza today. We didn't get through quite all of the issues. The ones we didn't get to, um, I'll just roll over for next time. And next time we're actually going to get a preview of forums next. So that should be a really um, exciting day. So you'll get to see um, some of the, the, the work that's been going into um, the forums next project with Duke. So um, I encourage you guys to to um, come to that session. It's going to be um, not in two weeks, but in June, because we're the first and third Wednesdays. So, um, so it'll be the first week in June. And um, in the meantime, if you have any other JIRAs you want to add to our list to get to eventually, <laughs> feel free to send them my way and I will put them on the agenda. All right. So thanks, everybody. Have Thank a great you. day. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Adrian. Yeah, no problem. Bye, everybody.